Hello and welcome to Lyranara. Did you know that the health of your liver is directly related to the health of your brain? Well, in this video I'm going to show you this liver-brain connection, symptoms that you have to pay attention to, what is going on in the liver and uh, how this is uh, connected and related to problems in your brain and so much more. Before we do that though, if you enjoy this type of content, please support our work by liking, sharing and subscribing. Also comment down below and do not forget to hit the notification button. And I would also very much appreciate if you consider becoming a Patreon or making a small PayPal donation. Links in the description box below. It really helps us out a lot and your support keeps us going. Without further ado then, let's dive right in and look at the liver brain connection. So you might have heard about encephalopathy, which is a general term that describes a disease which affects the function or structure of your brain. There is also what is called hepatic encephalopathy, which is a decline in brain function that occurs as a result of severe liver disease. In this condition, your liver can't adequately remove toxins from your blood and this causes a buildup of toxins in your bloodstream, which can lead to brain damage. Hepatic encephalopathy can be acute, so short term, or it can become chronic, so a long term condition. In some cases, a person with hepatic encephalopathy may become unresponsive and even slip into a coma. Acute hepatic encephalopathy may also be a sign of terminal liver failure. Chronic hepatic encephalopathy may be also permanent or recurrent. And those with the recurrent version will have multiple episodes of hepatic encephalopathy throughout their lives. They will also require continuous treatment to help prevent the development of symptoms. Recurrent cases are usually seen in people with uh, severe cirrhosis or scarring of the liver. Hepatic encephalopathy mainly occurs in people with the following conditions. Acute fulminant hepatitis, which is a severe type of hepatitis that comes on suddenly. Toxic chronic hepatitis, usually type B or type C. And Rice syndrome. This is a rare and serious condition that is primarily seen in children and it causes sudden swelling and inflammation of the liver and the brain. Which are the major triggers of hepatic encephalopathy? First, ammonia dysmetabolism, which is a protein excess and a liver malfunction. Then false neurotransmitters astrocyte swelling and inflammation, oxidative stress, and also manganese deposition, which explains um, the Parkinson's-like uh, tremors also. Other common triggers are infections. Most frequent ones are Lyme disease, pneumonia, and HIV. Kidney problems leading to impaired kidney function. Hypoxia, which means low oxygen levels in the blood. Recent surgery or trauma, especially related to the liver and the kidneys. Medications that suppress your immune system um, because they are often given because of so-called autoimmune conditions. Excessive consumption of animal proteins with accumulation of ammonia and purines. Excessive consumption of alcohol. Medications that suppress your central nervous system, such as uh, barbiturates or benzodiazepine uh, tranquilizers. Electrolyte imbalances, especially a decrease in potassium after vomiting or taking diuretics, as well as cirrhosis complications. What are the symptoms that you have to look out for? Well, the symptoms are different and depend on the underlying cause of the liver damage, the severity of the symptoms and the time course. People with chronic hepatic encephalopathy have better recovery rates than those with acute uh, encephalopathy. And the rate of recovery increases if you receive treatment before the condition gets worse. 
hepatic encephalopathy and its symptoms can be reversible with proper treatment of the liver diseases which underlie their condition. Symptoms and signs of moderate hepatic encephalopathy may include difficulties thinking, personality changes, poor concentration, problems with handwriting or loss of other small hand movements, confusion, forgetfulness, poor judgment, and a musty or sweet breath odor. Symptoms of severe hepatic encephalopathy are confusion, drowsiness or lethargy, anxiety, seizures, severe personality changes, fatigue, speech irregularities and missing words, shaky hands, as well as slow movements. Patients with minimal hepatic encephalopathy have a normal neurological examination. However, they may still be symptomatic and symptoms relate to disturbances uh, in sleep, memory, attention, concentration and other areas of cognition. A classic sign of uh, HE is a sleep disturbance. On a sleep questionnaire, disturbance is seen in 47% of cirrhotic patients compared with only 4.5% in the control group. Unsatisfactory sleep is associated with higher scores of depression and anxiety, and it raises also the possibility that the effects of chronic disease may underlie the pathogenesis of sleep disturbance. Disturbances in cirrhotics may also be related to abnormalities of the circadian rhythm. A defective memory can also be a sign of mild uh, hepatic encephalopathy. Patients with MHE have impaired short and long-term memory. This impairment is predominantly related to deficits in attention and visual perception. Several cognitive statements and or complaints have predictive value for MHE, including impaired psychomotor performance, so when you have difficulties doing handwork or you're not working at all. Cognitive impairment in MAG mainly affects the complex activities involving attention, information processing, skills such as driving a car, planning a trip, etc. Whereas basic activities of daily life such as shopping, dressing, personal hygiene, etc. are preserved. Patients with MHE had a significant impairment of daily functioning such as social interaction, alertness, emotional behavior, home management, recreation and pastimes compared with thyrotic patients who did not have MHE. And despite being frequently dismissed as a vague, unimportant complaint, brain fog is one of the more common symptoms of chronic liver disease. And this is likely due to the liver disease's tendency to impair energy production and blood detoxification. One of the liver's most vital responsibilities is the filtering of toxins uh, out of the blood. And when you battle chronic liver disease, the liver can accumulate scars, some of which may become permanent. The more scarred the liver becomes, the less effective it is at removing toxins from the blood supply. Another prime responsibility of the liver is its role in carbohydrate metabolism and the liver converts carbohydrates into glucose and glycogen. Glucose is used instantly for energy and glycogen is stored by the liver to be used later for energy production. The more damage to the liver incurs from chronic liver disease, the less able this organ is to produce and store energy. A combination of toxins in the bloodstream and lowered energy levels make brain fog a likely consequence of chronic liver disease. In addition, those with liver concerns can benefit from supporting their liver's ability to detoxify and produce energy. A solid recipe for easing also fatigue, disorientation and frustration, which is characteristic of brain fog. A new research suggests that your liver could be literally eating your brain. 
People with extra abdominal fat are three times more likely than lean individuals to develop memory loss and dementia later in life. And now scientists, they say that they may know why this is the case. It seems that the liver and the hippocampus, so the memory center in the brain, share a craving for a certain protein called PPAR-alpha. The liver uses PPAR-alpha to burn belly fat and the hippocampus uses PPAR-alpha to process memory. In people with a large amount of belly fat, the liver needs to work overtime to metabolize that fat and uses up all the PPAR-alpha, first depleting locus stores and then raiding the rest of the body, including the brain, according to a new study. The process essentially starves the hippocampus uh, of PPAR-alpha, thus hindering memory and learning. This was uh, from a study uh, by Rush University Medical Center in Chicago, uh, published in the journal uh, Cell Report. Uh, other new reports were incorrect in stating that obese individuals were 3.6 times more likely than lean individuals to develop dementia. In an article in the Annals of Neurology, researchers at Boston University School of Medicine found that the greater the amount of belly fat, the greater the brain shrinkage is in old age. The surprising discovery in the new study is that the hippocampus uses PPAR-alpha to process memory and learning and that this is a possible reason for the connection between belly fat and dementia and or memory loss. Further research must be conducted, however, to see how we could potentially maintain normal PPAR-alpha in the human brain in order to be resistant to memory loss and PPAR-alpha thus provides a new avenue to explore in searching for a treatment or cure for Alzheimer's disease, dementia and related memory loss and cognition problems according to the researchers. With all that being said, you see very clearly that you have to take care of your liver, you have to detox and you have to uh, look at the liver when it comes to brain fog and other symptoms that we've discussed here where you might think oh this stems from problems in my brain but it might well be that it's the liver that causes those problems if you have any questions of course you can always contact us and uh, if you enjoyed this presentation please like share and subscribe also comment below and hit the notification button, of course, so you don't miss out on the weekly content that appears here. And also consider becoming a Patreon or making a small PayPal donation to support us directly in our work. Thank you so much for that. And until next time, stay healthy.